Do you find the blank TV to be an eyesore? Now, with the press of a button, you can go from this to this. Welcome to DLU Creates. Today, we're going to design and build this TV lift cabinet. But unlike many cabinets you can find, this one has a special feature. It moves the cover up and down, making it much better for large TVs. TVs are often the center of the living room, but they don't look very good when they're off. It seems like a lot of manufacturers have thought the same, since they've come up with all sorts of ambient modes to make them look better when they're not in use. I want the couch to face the windows, so I'll put the TV in a decorative box and make it as small as possible so as not to block the view. It'd also be nice to play music through the soundbar without turning on the TV. By the way, LG's rollable OLED TV has a very similar goal, but it's extremely complicated mechanically, and its price is more than a little out of reach. Let's get into our design. We're going for the Strapandi aesthetic, with light colors and wood. We also like the look of decorative slats. This is the lift mechanism we're going to use. It's a linear actuator similar to what you'd find in a standing desk. Our first design idea is to put the TV lift behind some cabinet shelving. The soundbar can sit in these top shelves where the slats are open. This is a pretty basic TV lift cabinet design, but we have a problem. When you go to 55 or 65 inch screens, the TV has to raise quite a distance in order to clear the cabinet. With our low couches, this means you have to look uncomfortably upwards. I wouldn't want the setup to end up on R slash TV too high. We need to lower the TV so it only partially emerges from the box. The next design idea is to have this cover that can fold down. We can put the soundbar on top so the cabinet can also be shallower. But I'm still not quite happy because the folding design seems a little cumbersome. So what if we made the cover slide up and down? Here's a conceptual mock-up of how it might look before we add the structure to hold it together. So how might we implement this? It took a couple more iterations. Here's one possibility where I suspended the wooden slats with threaded rod and 3D printed spacers. Eventually, I settled on an even simpler design. It's essentially built around a plywood box. The TV lift and the slats are attached to this box. The back has these rails where the cover slides in. So how do we make the cover move? We could add a separate motor, but that's a lot of extra complexity. Instead, we'll piggyback off of the lift mechanism by tying a string between the TV lift and the cover. By using some pulleys, we can redirect the force so that when the TV goes down, the cover comes up. The top is going to be a flat lid rigidly attached to the lift. Some of the back panels are removable so that we can install and adjust the mechanism that moves the cover. There are gaps in the back of the base to allow the power cable to enter. Here's a rendering of how we hope it'll look. Let's get started building. I made a cut list for the project making some adjustments so that it would fit on two sheets of plywood. I didn't start getting video until a little later, but there were 98 pieces to cut out and it took six hours in the shop. I glued up a few pieces, made pocket holes, and brought everything home from the maker space. I made this handy spacing jig, which I used to carefully position all the slats and attach them to the box with screws. The back comes together with pocket screws, and next we add the rails that will hold the top cover. But when I went to put the cover on, it was too tight at first and it jammed. So I added a few washers to the rails as spacers. And now it finally moves. You can see the string is attached to the actuator so that when the TV comes up, the cover goes down. It was far from perfect though. I wanted to use these turnbuckles to adjust the length of the lines, but the additional friction and therefore tension in the lines causes the eye hooks to bend. The thin string is also cutting a groove into the metal. I'm gonna ditch the turnbuckles and switch to a thicker paracord. Next, we're going to glue the decorative top slats. I made this 3D printed jig to space the slats evenly. Now I'll put it together for another test, including the TV. And so far, so good. It's time to apply finish. I wasn't planning on doing much sanding originally, but there are a lot of burn marks in the plywood that I want to get rid of. These Baltic birch edges are really prominent, so we want them to look as good as possible. But as I sand some more, I just keep finding more and more imperfections. Guess I need to buy a power sander. Sanding the edges makes it feel a lot more refined, but it takes a while because there are just so many edges when you have slats. I decided to take off all the slats because there were too many nooks and crannies to apply a finish easily. Now I'm ready to give it a coat of water-based polyurethane. Once the first coat's dry, it needs a quick sand and another coat. 
This is my first time using polyurethane, and I'm pretty surprised at how long the process takes. There are just so many surfaces to cover, and multiple coats takes a lot of time. And now we can do the final assembly. I'm going to reinstall the slats, enlarging the existing holes to be clearance holes so that I don't have to use the spacing jig again. The top slats go on using pocket screws to hide the edge. We use more pocket screws for the bottom of the box and the back of the box. Here I'm also moving the back wall forward slightly because in my first test there was too much of a gap between the cover and the front of the box. I put the lift mechanism in place and secured it with screws. Next I mount the control box for the lift. It comes with a wireless remote control as well as this wired remote. I'm mounting it inside the box to serve as a backup. Next, I'm making a bracket to hold the top of the box. These slots are going to allow for adjustability so that the lid can close perfectly. I'm going to attach the lid to the bracket using magnets. This allows the lid to be popped off for servicing. It's also a little safer in case something gets jammed underneath it while it's closing. Next, we'll slide in the top cover, drop the TV in place, and we'll attach and route the paracord. Unfortunately, now that I've gotten rid of the adjustment turnbuckles, it's a pretty tedious process to set the length of the lines correctly. Even though I'm using an adjustable taut line hitch for the knot, it still requires way too much trial and error. It's also just a very narrow and awkward space for my hands. This could definitely be improved. I guess this is close enough for now. Now we need a hole for the wires of the soundbar. Oops, that's a lot of tear out. Fortunately, it's on the bottom of the lid where no one will see it. Okay, so I called the project done for a couple days, but I'm getting more and more annoyed at this gap under the lid. It even seemed to be growing over time. We need a way to adjust the lines more easily, and also to reduce the friction and therefore backlash in the system. I'm going to design some 3D printed pulleys that will replace the eye hooks that currently redirect the paracord. I'm using some skateboard bearings that I had lying around from a previous project. This piece I'm building now is a double pulley that will be fixed to the backboard. And this one is a moving pulley for the adjustment turnbuckle. I'm planning to use these extension springs in order to keep the line under tension. Conveniently, this lift actually extends much higher, which is useful for servicing. I'm installing the pulley and the adjustment turnbuckle. But here's the problem. The spring is just too soft and I can't pull up the cover. I've forgotten something very important here. The moving pulley is actually at a two to one mechanical disadvantage in this system. Good old high school physics. I guess we'll do without the springs. Okay, this isn't great. The screws are bending for the double pulleys. Let's try it anyway. And it broke. On both of these double pulleys at the top, the plastic wheels have broken. Earlier I had noticed a tendency for the paracord to derail. So at full load, there was just too much of a sideways force being applied to the pulleys. Also these eye hooks just bent pretty badly. All right, it's a new day and I'm ready for a new approach. We're gonna replace the remaining eye hooks with single pulleys and I'll add some eye hooks as guards to slightly redirect the paracord so it's always pulling on axis with the pulleys. We'll also route the line like this so there's less load on the fixed pulley. And what do you know? After all that, it works. All I have to do is use these handy dandy turnbuckles now and it closes up the gap. One small trick we can do is to tip the lid forward so that it wants to close the gap. And boom, perfect. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks great, 
and it met all the original design criteria. It has a minimal profile, and the TV is not too high. A lot of the fun in making things is solving all the small challenges along the way to finally get to a working result. I hope you liked seeing this iterative engineering process, both in the 3D design and the actual construction. I only recently started making furniture. After the dining table and the coffee tables, the moving component added a really fun challenge to this project. Thanks for watching my first in-depth build video. I've got lots more projects to share, so I hope you like and subscribe. See you next time.